Slowly as I've been living in Denmark and developing some sort of a life, I'm starting to get back into this because I really love being up here and, and you know, laughing with people or getting people to laugh or whatnot. Uh, and then, but as I get back into it, uh, it's like it's like I have a hoarder's house of thoughts in my head. Like I can't organize anything up there. It's and, and I grew up in a hoarder's house, so I know what it's all about. Uh, my mom, my adoptive mom, she sleeps on a recliner chair. It's like her island, her oasis of space around just a sea of newspapers. <laughs> Three decades old. Uh, if you want to find the Challenger explosion article from 1986, maybe from today or tomorrow of 1986, uh, you'll probably find it under uh, a garbage bag full with our dead Cocker Spaniel who died 12 years ago because she just can't throw anything away. She's from the Bronx. She believes something's gonna, it's gonna be worth something someday. You can't throw it out. So it's really good. My dad, when he died, he died in the hospital and not in the house. Because he might be in the kitchen with the Cocker Spaniel, you know, and it's not like a Hall of Fame of relatives. It's just, you know, in the corner, there's a dead dog. In the corner, there was a plant, you know. Here's my father. We haven't buried him yet because I will get around to it, you know. And she sleeps like, and basically, the heat's gone out in the house because no one can come in and fix anything. So, yeah, I swear, it's fucking, it's like, the United States, she lives in Indiana, in the United States, it's like negative 16 Fahrenheit, so that's like a negative 100 in Celsius. You do the math, I can't, but it's fucking cold. And the heat doesn't work, and she has, she's like, ah, I've got a space heater. But the space heater sits on the layers of newspaper, so really it's a fire hazard if she could blow up at any moment. <laughs> 74 years old, I mean, she's due, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, but I can understand uh, fire hazards and fires. Uh, I almost set my apartment on fire here in Denmark, and it all started uh, with seven grams of magic mushrooms. <laughs> Because I've learned that one gram, two grams, three grams, more like one gram or two grams, they're great for playing music. They're great for playing baseball. You feel your body. You move like a panther. Like, your, your hunting skills are, you know, it's, it, there's even scientific theories about this. Uh, Terrence McKenna, uh, he, you know, he's like the mushroom, like, uh, uh, orator and connoisseur, and so I'd listen to this guy, and he'd be like, you know, if you really want to go deep, and you really want to go to outer space, like, like, the hell with the Hubble telescope, seven grams of mushrooms in silent darkness. You will see things behind your eyelids, more things behind your eyelids than Ferdinand Magellan did in his entire journeys across the Atlantic. And I would have to say that's true, but, but to get to that point, you have to, you have to really prepare your set and setting. And I thought I had my bases covered. Uh, I ate two grams. Uh, and then, uh, and I, then I go down to take a shower and of course masturbate. Because you masturbate on drugs. Who doesn't masturbate on drugs? <laughs> and so I come back up, and it's great, actually, the masturbating on mushrooms. Because it's not just like you're just and done tossing a load out to get through the day to manage your biology. This is more like, it's more like a craft, like comedy or music, where you're, you're holding the bass and you're working it around. <laughs> it's like kung fu for your cock. <laughs> it's incredible. So then I go up the stairs, I go back because our showers are, it's a common showers down below. I go all the way back up and I'm like, all right, set and setting. You know, the last time I took mushrooms, I ate lasagna. And that lasagna ended up on the wall on the other side of the toilet. So I'm not going to eat lasagna today. What I'm going to have is bland food, like cucumbers at Gwok for the Danes. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, rice, plain rice, and then a glass of water. And, but I'm already on two grams of mushrooms. I start making the rice, I'm like, fuck it. And I'm measuring it out. Like, I'm really trying to, you know, be a scientist about this, uh, an uneducated scientist about this. And uh, so I'm, I, got the, the, I got the two grams in me, I'm starting the rice, and then I pop in another three grams, 
and I got, <laughs> things are starting to, my head is starting to get a little, it's like pressurized and tight, and my balance is like, ah, you know, I'll be all right, I got 18 minutes, this shit takes like an hour to kick in, and so I got the waters boiling, and then I'm like, you know, yeah, why don't I just take these two extra grams, and then I'm done with it, so if the police come, it's just, oh, it's just a weird guy, because you start to get paranoid, of course, on drugs, and so, 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 so I figure, what the hell, I'll just eat these two grams and just nail it home and make sure that I'm going to go where I want to go, which is really where I don't, I don't know where I'm going, because I've never been there before, but... From what other people say, it's pretty cool. So, so you know, it's kind of like indirect peer pressure from a podcast from like 1989. <laughs> I, I call it inspiration. My wife calls it peer pressure. Whatever. <laughs> Anyhow, so uh, so I got the 18 minutes. I take the last two grams. I got seven grams of mushrooms in me, and it's almost like my body knew to receive it and turn some things on. Because uh, all of a sudden, it's really just wanting to pull me. And on less grams of mushrooms, you have energy. You want to run around. You want to go into nature. Heavy grams of mushrooms, you don't want to go anywhere. I mean, I sent my wife and kids. I sent my wife and kids away up to up uh, up to northern part of Shellen because they're not going to want to see me on seven grams. I won't be able to help the, with the ch seven grams. I mean, the children will be wanting food, and I'll just be like you know, throwing air at them. <laughs> Here, eat this. <laughs> so, so anyway, and, and I told everybody, all my friends, like, ah, I'm not going to be home, because you don't want to answer your door. You don't want to hear a when you're on seven grams of mushrooms. It could be anything. It could be a rhinoceros. It could be your grandmother who's been, you know, who lives in Florida and has been in a coma. It could be anything. So you tell her, I'm not home, I'm not going anywhere, but I'm standing there with the, with the rice cooking and, uh, and the, the mushrooms starting to pull me down and I'm looking at the clock and it's like 18 and it's really starting to move slower and slower and I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna chill, I'm just gonna relax, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna lay down a little bit, you know, and wait for the 18 minutes to pass and then I lay down and I'm like laying here and, and oh, yeah, and I'm just chilling out and I can feel the trip really starting to take hold and, and it's kind of like you gotta open your eyes, you gotta open your eyes to get air. And then the mushroom just kind of grabs you by the back of your head and just pulls you back in. And if you really let this happen with seven grams of mushrooms, you're going to lay here for seven hours. And you don't want to lay here for seven hours when you have rice cooking on the stove. Probably a high fucking flame. I mean, I'm just destined for fucking failure, so I would just like, no, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't go to sleep, I can't lay down, I can't, and I'd look up, and it seemed like an eternity, but I'd look up, and it would just be three minutes on the timer. It's like, oh my god, I got like fucking 15 minutes, 15 minutes, all right, I'm just gonna chill out again, just gonna lay right here and chill out again, but then it's like that mushroom really is just sucking your head down into the floor. And like you're pulling yourself up and it's just drawing you back down and you're fighting with this and, and it seems really like, you know, it's been a month and again, it's only been a minute, a minute? Like you gotta be fucking kidding me. Like how am I gonna do this? Like, like Jesus, all I wanna do is lay down and it's just constantly back and forth of like standing up and laying down and it's like, it's like ADD times 60. You <laughs> So, uh, finally, like, I, you know, I'm like, I'm, I finally make it, I, I get to the finish line, dee, 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 dee. I'm like, oh, sweet, and the, the rice is good, and I just pour a bowl, and I got that gork already, the cucumber already cut, and the glass of water, and I go into my bed, and I lay down, and I finally just lay down, and oh, and then as I lay down, it's just like, the mushroom just pulls me in, and it's like, ah, oh, Kevin, welcome, I'm going to put you into position and send you into the universe. And it just shoots me and fucking pulls me and I see like grids of uh, pixie colored spider webs and giant, have you seen the dark crystal? 
giant, giant spiders fluttering and clattering and with their pixies and it's almost, but they're not attacking. So I'm like, oh, finally, I've met my spirit animal. And then I go deeper and deeper and through and then I get to this fence. And it's this red and it looks, it looks kind of like, uh, like one of those porno pictures from the 70s, just bush. <laughs> from like eternity to eternity, just bush. Just <laughs> like an electric fence of bush. Just <laughs> and I'm starting to get annoyed because I'm like, you know, I, I, I've made all these preparations, I've done all this, I, I almost burned my house down, but I'm at this point and now I'm at this fence <laughs> of bush. Is this all what I'm about? Like, am I really just this empty scumbag? I mean, just, I mean, Bush is great, but I thought I was deeper than just caring about pussy and Bush. And it's cool that it vibrates and it's electric and it's like, ooh, like Carl Sagan's wife's Bush, but just Bush. And I'm just, and, and McKenna says that, you know, you gotta talk to the mushroom. You gotta say, oh, yeah, I want you to show me more. Like, can you act like DMT? Can you act like ketamine? Can you act like this? Can you just talk with the mushroom? Be friends with the mushroom. Show me more. But I was fucking agitated. So I wasn't being polite. So I'm like, mushroom, come, mushroom, show me more. Show me more. Motherfucker, show me more. This is bullshit. I fucking do all this shit, all this preparation. I spend all this time. Show me more. And the mushroom's like, you want to see more? Yeah, I want to see more. Enlighten me. Show me Nirvana. And the bush just, like, there, just spreads open. Shh, like, gravity just grabs me and shoots me through into the bush, through the opening of the bush. Shh, like, 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 time travel tubes, uh, tumbling and lights and all this stuff. And I'm, of course, I'm like, it's so much. It's like every single piece of information going through my head at the same time. And it's just way overwhelming. And so my only way for a break of that is to open my eyes and come up for air, so to speak. But it's, it's so strong. The seven grams are so strong. It just makes me close my eyes and pulls me back down. And I'm back into, this, into the tubes and flying around. And I finally end up where I'm shot out. I look down. There's planet Earth. It's just like an umbilical cord, my consciousness, umbilical cord, and earth. And that's, you know, that feels like home, doesn't it? Have you been there, right? And then it's, sh then I, and then I, right as I get comfortable, it shoots me back down through earth. And, and I'm in like some fucking, I'm in antiquity, like ancient Egypt, and, and these giant, I'm like standing there as a little boy holding hands with, what looks like my mother or felt like my mother and these giant tanks they're like alien battle tanks through ancient Cairo with beautiful jewels and crystals but these tanks again are organic alien tanks with that spider theme like these giant tarantulas on the back and tr driving these things with like predator heads and Medusa snakes flipping and flying around and everybody's like yay the army parade the army and I'm just like what the fuck is this army doing <laughs> Is this, is this Earth? Where am I? And of course it feels so real that you think it's real and it could be real in some sort of dimensional level. But then you open your eyes again and you're like, God damn, that's just too much. I, I took too much. I'm going to die from this. It just, when is it going to stop? And I know like when my wife once took mushrooms, she took like three grams with us the whole time. She's like, when is it going to stop? Oh, nothing's real. And taking swings at us and pulling necklaces and throwing plates because nothing was real to her. And this felt so real, so way too much fucking real, <laughs> really way too, and I was begging it for it, for it to stop. And uh, at some point, you know, through all the, the, it's like seven hours later, eight hours later, uh, I, 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 everything's, the, the pressure of the mushroom is fading, and my eyes are starting to be able to stay open, and, uh, and I'm laying, and, and that's when all these reflective things, like, oh, I'm back, I made it. And, 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 and all of the pictures of my children on the wall are shining, like, oh, I'm going to make sure to be more patient with them. And, 
you know, and I'm thinking pictures of my wife, I'm like, oh, I'm thinking of my wife, I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going to have a better relationship now, and, and we're going to get over those marital issues, and, and I'm going to tell her that, hey, she needs to accept me for me, and accept me for my habits, and, and, and love me for me, because I'm just this little boy trying to deal with adulthood, like, most men I know, we're just, we're like, we fucking grew up, okay, we're, and every day is like dealing with grow, being a grown-up and not having our mommies anymore. And, and, and for myself, for something for me to work on, uh, well, basically, I, I realized that if you want to have sex at night, dudes, you cannot beat off during the day, especially as you're getting older. You cannot beat off during the day. You have to save your loads. <laughs> because I know what happens to me. What happens to me is that uh, my Jewish cock enters her wet cave and falls asleep like a hiker seeking shelter. <laughs> Thank you very much. Woo!